Hi, welcome to CEO Meets. I'm Pip Wilkins, uh, Chief Executive of the BFA, and I'm really pleased to be joined by Elton from Creams. So Elton, welcome along. Um, if we could start by you just telling us a bit about Creams, uh, what are you and what do you do? Thanks, Pip. Lovely to, to catch up with you today. So my name's Elton. I'm the Commercial and Operations Director for Creams Franchising Limited. Um, we operate the UK's leading dessert parlours up and down the lengths and breadths, and I look after our franchisees. I'm here to make sure their businesses are success and that they make as much money as they can to open more creams with me. Um, so <laughs> HR, the rest of it, that, that all falls under my remit. And I've, I've seen, I've been to one, I've eaten my <laughs> life weight in ice cream uh, <laughs> and I have to say it's great. Um, but you have three different models, don't you? So can you give us a bit of an overview about how each of those work? Yeah, so we started lockdown, we, we were primarily known for our full service restaurants um, and we were building up on a smaller concept to make the, the most of smaller spaces in high footfall areas, which is our, our kiosk model. Um, we managed to open two of those during lockdown, which is fantastic in Doncaster and Old Street because they could really leverage a delivery basis. So they don't have, they have a couple of seats to sit in so you can get out the rain and have it, but otherwise it's not plated service, it's takeaway containers, it's built around fast and expeditious service and a slightly smaller menu and then also during lockdown we built a grab and go concept that you could put into somewhere like a tfl or a, a St pancreas station really maximizing a three meters by three meter space where again with a slightly smaller menu selling our best selling items our waffles our gelatos that are made in our sister company in the uk in our factory um whatever that is that can just allow a franchisee for a slightly smaller investment to build their portfolio of businesses with creams um, from just having these sort of restaurants throughout. We also spent the year uh, redoing our concept for our full service restaurants. We launched our first new look one in Cardiff. We did that in January of this year, which is always the perfect time to open a full sit down dining restaurant when it's locked down and no one can go into it, but it's doing, <laughs> it's doing really, really well. Uh, and with that design, we've, we've built, we bought the cost down by about 35, 40%. So that initial investment has, has dropped as well. Sometimes just getting rid of that day-to-day -day business as usual stuff and focusing on something which the pandemic's allowed us to do um, can really generate some, some positive rewards. Yeah, it's, it's helped us all fast track things. So what makes Cardiff different to the others then? Uh, it's built slightly differently. So we used to have um, the, the, the counters designed and, and handmade for us in Italy, which are absolutely astounding. Um, but we could work out during lockdown with companies that had a bit more time as well, how we can model those in the UK, uh, how we can utilize technology uh, and new finishes that perhaps we couldn't have had the time to do, or our designers and the fantastic team at Nest um, we're so busy all the time doing day-to-day -day stuff that now there's less of that. You know what, I can give you half a day to really go through. How can I take this from here to here, from good to great, as it were? Uh, so yeah, so it, it's it's a lot, it's a different finish, different look. Go on the website, have a look at it. It's absolutely um, fantastic, low energy, all those little things that were on the really important to get done. Yes. Yeah. I've been done. So uh, yeah, trade well. So there's some of your successes in the last 12 months. What have been some of your challenges? I guess this time, or March last year, we had delivery in all our, we worked with Uber Eats, Just Eat and Deliveroo, uh, and they were, they were nice to have. She kind of did a full service restaurant, delivery was an extra, because you had a team on you may as well. So to pivot our business to being uh, a delivery based business during periods of lockdown, and then being able to switch back out again, has been a real challenge. It's an education piece. We've increased the number of team we had in our, our support team. So we have more people now than we did at the start of the pandemic. Uh, we've diversified that, that knowledge. So we have a social media and delivery platform manager who knows all about the, 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 the nuances of prep time right away and all the rest of it that can really help our franchisees to understand an area of the business perhaps be new to them. Um, and I guess, yeah, the biggest challenge has been taking people on that journey remotely. So having to do new site builds, building Old Street and Doncaster and uh, Morden with people holding their phone to their head as they're walking around a site for me because <laughs> I wasn't allowed to travel there to make sure things were in the right place. Brilliant. But, but we've done it. Uh, and holding virtual open days and interviews. I've, I've met a lot of our new franchisees. I have no clue what they look like from here down. Uh, <laughs> this is all I see of them uh, we, until they get on site. We've had some funny conversations about that internally where, uh, you know, as some of our team haven't met. And, uh, 
yeah, you, you suddenly discover that they're, they're not six foot two as they said they were, and they're really like five foot three. So it's, uh, yeah, we, it's yeah, we, we, we hired three new area managers, uh, and I had my own perceived concept of how tall they were wrong. On every level, I was wrong, but they're brilliant and they're really good. They're hands on, they're in the stores helping the franchisees. But you sat there going, Yeah, you, know, you say you're a footballer, you must be. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so how have you been working with your franchisees kind of over the last year differently um we reduced the number of visits our team were doing but made them more functional so rather than that sort of popping coffee coffee and a chat catch up they were dedicated we'll be with you you're our only visit today um full covid risk assessment everything else we reduced the number of stores per area manager by hiring some new area managers so again to reduce the risk of <laughs> crossover and likewise enable someone to be there to support you uh, and done lots of these so we've done teams area meetings teams training we launched a brand new virtual training academy in may last year with uh, upskill people at, and uh, pete fullard and my fantastic head of people ali has really brought that forward so we've now got uh, quick start uh, sorry kickstart and apprenticeships they're all la launching as well and you can do a lot more if you're not traveling two hours to a training session you get two more four hours of back out of your life doing it on this little screen so it works it's, it's, it's well. amazing i yeah. mean my face looks fatter every time i log in but other than that it's good <laughs> Doesn't, you know okay people just keep wondering why i've got a giant e behind me but i'm not going to tell you i, I worked that out I, I figured you just liked your initials behind you <laughs> <laughs> in case i forget who i am yeah <laughs> is there a story behind the giant e that we need to know about yeah, it, I'm a football fan, uh, I support Southampton, and that's the letter. My wife kindly bought it for me as a birthday present when they changed the signage at the stadium. But now the only place oh. to let me hang it is behind my head, which makes me look like the biggest narcissist in the world. But it's the only place in the house I'm allowed to put the sign she bought me. I, I like that. I, I like football, <laughs> so I'm, 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 I'm with you. Um, <laughs> I have a, just a couple of last questions. What, what's the kind of the big plans, goals for you over, you know, for the rest of this year and then sort of looking for five years? Yeah, I, I think what the pandemic's taught us is that we have to be ahead of the game. So stage one, we were a little on the hop in March, but we then started putting down the plans for what ifs. So we were ready for lockdown two. And to be fair, we were ready for lockdown three. We had new products in line. We had new ways of rolling things out. We, we, we got it nailed. Um, I think this year is about consolidating our position, accepting there may be a variant we don't know about that may land and cause us to have some challenges. So we've got a backup plan ready for... God forbid that happens. We will open 25 stores this year with our fantastic franchisees. Many are getting more and more of them. Uh, and within five years, we will have moved abroad and we'll have got franchisees to that point where they will have a main core business and then lots of uh, maybe satellite, the kiosk or the grab and goes that we've talked about uh, and to facilitate our franchisees to grow and get that return investment that they need to around about 200 stores in the next sort of two, three years. That's brilliant. Really, really great plans for growth. Um, my last question, I ask everybody the same thing. If you were to give somebody some advice, if they're looking to invest in a franchise, what would be your key tip? Don't be afraid to ask difficult questions. Don't be afraid to probe if you don't believe an answer. And you're working with people. So if the people you're talking to don't feel like someone you can work with, don't do it. Because when you hit that battle, it'll be the franchise or you pick up the phone to say, can someone come and help me? And that's what a franchise should be there for. They should be there to come and give you that hand. That's why you're paying for that support structure. Um, so bear that in mind when you're talking about it. Talk about it, know what you want to get out of it. If it's just pin money, great, go for it. But if it is a long-term investment plan, talk about that from the start so you can work with your franchise or not battle with them all the way through. That's a brilliant piece of advice. Um, thank you so much, Elton. It's been fab chatting to you today and um, look forward to being part of this journey as you continue to grow in the marketplace. Thanks for your time. Thanks.